Oh, good morning my little seedlings, Chris here the Country Cottage Gardener coming back at you with another video and this all stems from um, a lot of comments I get on my Instagram if you don't follow me I put a lot of projects up on there that I don't necessarily film I'm going to apologise now I'm working along a very busy main road and it's been raining all morning hence the snazzy jacket anyway a comment that happens quite often is how do I fit locks onto garden gates and I tend to use a Yale type lock, so it's a cylinder lock, uh, put it onto garden gates. Anyway, I'm installing these driveway gates here, <coughs> and we're putting a, a latch rose, which I'll show you in a minute, and also a lock as well. I'm also going to be putting a couple of drop bolts on here. So I'm basically just going to show you in this quick video how I install them. Let's fling the camera around and you can have a little look at some of the tools you're going to need. Right, okay, so let's start with this gate lock. This one's made by Perry, but you've also got one by Gatemate. Basically, they're the same thing. And you can get them in 50mm or 70mm. So, or it might be 54mm. But anyway, 50ish and 70. So you need to check what is relevant for your gate. For a garden gate, it's the 50 one, because otherwise you'll have this bit sticking out at the end of the gate, and it looks terrible. Anyway, in the box you get your keys, you get the receiver, you get a cylinder lock plate, you get the lock itself. Now on the Gatemate ones you do get a template which sticks to the gate and you can work from that. Um, it is handy, I never keep them because they always get destroyed. So anyway, to install this, you're gonna, well, basically you're going to need your drills and for this um, I believe it's in the Gatemate ones, again, you also do get a spade bit, but to be honest, they're pants, they do split, they're rubbish. So, I like using um, these types of uh, drill bits. I picked these up in Aldi, and a whole set of them, I think was something like seven pounds, and they've been an absolute godsend, absolutely fantastic. Anyway, I think this is a 30mm, uh, and you can see it just about covers the cylinder. You can go slightly bigger on it. Uh, because you have got a little bit of forgiveness on the back there, but I like to keep it nice and snug, nice and snug in there. And you can see the amount of keys you get with this, it's fantastic. Anyway, and then you need your relevant drill bit for your screws. Again, in the Gatemate ones, you seem to get your screws with it, but I wasn't fortunate enough with this Perry one, so I have got these kicking around in my toolbox, um, so I'm going to use those. Anyway. And here's the rose latch, which I'm sure you're all be familiar with, uh, but I'll show you for those who don't know anyway. So again, all you need is your relevant drill bit, um, fistful of screws for those, and that is a 20mm bit, that one, which will go for there. Anyway, let's set the camera up, and you can have a little look at what okay, it takes. So the first thing you want to do is actually offer everything up. You want to make sure that everything fits and isn't going to interfere. On the other side of this gate, I've got a slam plate. So you want to make sure everything's clear from that. Now, the likability of having both of these bits of ironwork on your gate is fairly slim. Um, normally, you'd have one or t'other, but uh, being entrance gates, you want them to be secure. So this will just keep it nice and secure at the top. Drop bolts during the day, and then it can be locked if they choose to go away or at night or whatever. Anyway. So offer it all up and make sure you're not going to interfere with anything else. You want to be putting them onto these rails, onto these ledges. So these are a ledge and brace gates. It's going to get a little bit complicated, well, complicated. Basically, your ledges are these and your braces are those. Ledge and brace. So, I've decided I'm going to put my rows on this one and I'm going to put the lock at the top. Um, there's enough just to miss that uh, receiving plate the other side. So I'm going to get a small drill bit, small one, and just drill a pilot hole there for Okay, pilot hole through. Now I can offer it up and just make sure everything's going to be good from this side. What you're primarily looking for is to make sure this is actually going to be long enough. So around the middle. Lovely. So, 
we can proceed with our bigger drill bit. Now with a garden gate, this will need to be cut down with a hacksaw to about, well, 55 mil or whatever it is. Basically goes in the end there, goes in the end there, and that's what does the mechanism. So stick that through the hole, this will be on the outside, that will be on the inside. Just like that. All we've got to do now is screw that bit in place. Tilt that round. Make sure that's nice and level. Well, as level as your eye to make it. Beautiful. You can always put one in and then adjust it. I like to put two in and then I put the rest of my iron work on. So that slips over the top on there. But before I do that one, I put that one on so I get that level. Okay, so you want this to be level across here. And you want to put this one on first, okay? So this is going to be level, we haven't got any screws in that middle holding plate yet. Put that screw in there. On. Put that up a little bit. Just check by eye that's okay. On there, so you can see that it still comes off. That's where this one comes into place, and this one has to sit higher. Okay, so you want the bottom of this sitting on the bottom of that one, and that's what gives you your movement. On. You can finish up with your other two screws in here. And on. Okay. Beautiful. Let's go around the other side. We're going to need four screws for that. I like to make sure the rose is up the same way on this as well. One. I always go corner to corner when I'm screwing anything like this. So it's like a car tyre. When you're putting a car wheel back on, you always go corner to corner with the nuts. I always like to do it this way as well. Corner to corner. I'm not sure it has any benefits on this sort of Thing, but it's just what I like to do. Force of habit, I guess. There we are. So that's all working from both sides. Don't make that sm that hole too small because you'll only hinder it. Let's bring you up. You can have a little look at it in action. Oh, right. Okay. Here we are. You see that line that I put on for this receiving plate. Boom! There we are. Now I have got a bit of spray in these gates at the moment because we've not got the drop bolts on. But that's it. See how that just about misses there. Okay. Nice and snug. Nice and snug. Beautiful. It's not going to be a hindering in any sense there. Boom. There we are, that's that bit done. 
we're going to put the lock up here now so let's set the camera back up so we've got our lock you do have an up and a down on this um, so like everything righty tighty lefty loosey so right is locking up but say if you messed up and then you had one of these in stock and it was say for a left-handed locking instead of a right-handed which you do get them you can turn it upside down and you can get away with it it just means that the lock is going to be back to front but in the great schemes of things it doesn't matter so let's offer it all up have a little look and then follow the same principles as we've just done with the rose latch so that's where the outside of my um, cylinder is going to be so there is where I'm going to go for the middle middle of this uh, left <laughs> I know from the outside I'm going to be missing. One thing you can do if you want to triple check is you've got your centre pilot hole. So you know that's going to be the middle of the lock. You can have your um, scratch plate or whatever they call this. Put this over on the outside just to see if you're missing that uh, receiving plate. Beautiful, no problem. Okay, so we've drilled through. We can place our cylinder in the hole. it goes all the way across for the locking which it does beautiful then we can proceed to one throwing that in from this side itch knee sanji there we go all lovely sitting nice and snug, keeping those gates beautifully together. All I've got to do now is put on the hygiene plate the other side. I say hygiene plate, I've stood on it, it's a bit muddy. Good as new. So in these particular drop bolts, Taurus, um, these are very generic, very generic, um, but this is what you get in the pack. You've got the bolt itself, the header receiver, the in-ground bolt tidy up plate thingy my bob. That's the thing that goes into the ground if you're going to concrete it in. And these are all receiving plates. And basically what we're going to have, let's build it on the ground here, is these on here. This goes on the top here as the receiver. So these all set out in certain distances, like thusly. I will probably not use that one. I will probably only use two because I want a lot of drop here. And the reason we got a lot of drop is because the driveway is broken over there and a lot higher. So we're going to have these as low down to the ground as we can get. I'm literally going to have the bottom of the bolt sitting at the bottom there and then I want a lot of drop on here. Anyway, let me show you that. Some one, oops, the block.
Street. I can count higher than four. But I choose not to. There we go. Oh. One drop bolt. Installed. Simple. Flip the camera around, you can have a proper look. I'm really rather fortunate that it's landed on those bits of mud there. Um, but as I say, I'm going to get a bit of concrete, scrape that out, sink those in, and um, that will just be the receiving thingamabobs for those. And that'll just keep them nice and You can see where cool, the action goes past, where the um, the trucks go by. So there we are, a couple of bolts. On there. Rose latch. There. Cylinder lock. There. Should we have a look from over the road at the whole job? That's if I don't get run over by the speeding traffic going past. There we are. So, so, so yeah, little set of driveway gates that we're doing. Hope you enjoyed that video. I've got a lot of fencing to do now. Tore out this fence line yesterday. Um, so now I've got six foot panels to come in timber posts so thankfully I say thankfully I prefer concrete posts because they're stronger and they hold themselves in position better when you're working but longevity I much rather have um, concrete than timber timber are easier to work with anyway I'm rabbiting I'll show you the end of the job once I've finished it I just thought I'd show you those if you don't already like subscribe comment all that great stuff and join me for another video soon Thank you very much.